everyone, I'm Catherine with Free Tours by Foot. New York City has served as the setting for dozens of films and TV shows over the years, but if you asked a lot of people, the very first one they would name would be Friends. Millions of people all over the world followed the story of six friends living in New York City for 10 seasons. And today, we're going to take a walk through Greenwich Village and see some of the most frequently used locations for the TV show Friends. We begin our walk from the West 4th Street subway station in the heart of Greenwich Village. From there, it's just a short walk to our first stop, 5 Morton Street, the location of Phoebe's apartment. And just a short walk from there, we will pay a visit to the most recognizable location of them all, the Friends Apartment Building, where Joey, Chandler, Rachel, and Monica all lived. And finally, we will end our walk around the block at one of New York's off-Broadway theaters where Joey has appeared in multiple plays. So before we start walking, I just want to situate you really quickly so you know where we are starting from. I just came out of the southernmost entrance of the West 4th Street subway station. So I am here at 6th Avenue and West 3rd Street. This is a very large station. There are multiple entrances. But this station serves the A, C, E, B, D, F, and M trains. So it's a great starting point for any walk through Greenwich Village. I'm walking south from that station now and we're heading down towards Bleecker Street. So before we even get started and get to some of these friends locations, just so you know, and if you're a big fan of the show, you may already know this. Even though Friends is set in New York City and is very much a New York City story, the majority of the show was filmed in California, uh, primarily on a soundstage, even, I'm sorry to say it, the Friends Fountain. So if you are ever walking around New York City, you pass by a fountain, if a passerby says, oh, that's the Friends Fountain, I'm sorry to say it, they are lying to you. <laughs> that's on a soundstage. Um, and like I said, the majority of the show was filmed that way, but there are a few buildings that were used throughout the show to set locations. We're going to see some of them on this walk. So we're heading now down towards Bleecker Street, really the heart of Greenwich Village, the neighborhood we're going to be going through. This is the neighborhood that the friends were all meant to live in throughout the entirety of the show, really all 10 seasons. So taking a right onto Bleecker Street now, Greenwich Village, friends aside, is an absolute must-see if you're making a trip to New York City. It is by far one of my favorite neighborhoods in New York. There's always something new to see, to do, to try. So if you're not sure where to start, I highly recommend check out a tour. Um, Free Tours by Foot offers pay-what-you-wish group walking tours in this neighborhood. Um, we have a general neighborhood tour. We have a food tour available. There's a ghost tour available. And if a tour doesn't fit into your schedule, we also have some self-guided and some audio tours, including some very specialized tours, like a Bob Dylan Greenwich Village tour. This is a fantastic neighborhood. It has an amazing history, so it's well worth exploring. This entire area actually used to be an independent village to the north of New York City which really just encompassed the area that we call Lower Manhattan today. And over the years, as this little village grew, it developed a unique street layout that you can still see to this day. This is one of the parts of New York City that does not conform to the grid pattern you find in most of Manhattan. Throughout the years, Greenwich Village became known as a place where you could find artists and writers and bohemians in the mid 20th century. This neighborhood was home to soon to be famous musicians like Bob Dylan, famous writers, famous artists, actors, um, activists. So there's really a lot to see. And like I said, very rich history in this area. I highly recommend checking out a tour, check out some of our blog posts if you want a place to start, and certainly come and see Greenwich Village when you're coming to New York. So I am at Morton Street right now. Morton Street and Bleecker Street. And I'm going to cross over so that we can check out our first location as soon as the traffic stops. 
So we are heading to number five, Morton Street. And the reason we are heading to number five, Morton Street, is because that is shown to be the building that the character Phoebe lives in. So Phoebe is the only one in the show that doesn't ever live in that main building that everybody recognizes at Grove and Bedford, the one where Monica and Rachel's apartment is, Joey and Chandler's apartment is. Um, Phoebe is meant to have lived there prior to the start of the show. She was Monica's former roommate, but throughout the series, she lives in an apartment here at number five, Morton Street. So this building here, you would maybe recognize from the show, but of course, the set where they actually filmed any scenes inside Phoebe's apartment was not inside this building that was on a sound stage. This building and the other apartment building, the far more recognizable apartment building, both would have been used in what are called establishing shots. And so these are sort of stock images of these buildings that would be shown at the beginning of a scene. And that lets the viewer know the scene you're about to see takes place in this building. So some establishing shots using that building there. So if you ever wondered, since Phoebe does not actually live in that building, if you ever wondered how plausible was it, how often she was over there, very plausible. You're actually going to see exactly how long it takes to walk from Phoebe's apartment to her friend's apartment because we're doing the walk now. It's only a few minutes. There's really just a few blocks away. So I am at 7th Street right now. It's that 7th looking uptown. We're at 7th and Morton Street and we're going to be crossing over 7th Avenue and heading over onto Bedford Street. Bedford and Grove is our destination. That is the iconic Friends apartment building. Even though Phoebe lived on Morton Street, when people say the Friends apartment building, they are almost certainly referring to the building at Bedford and Grove. And that is the building where Monica's apartment that she shares with Rachel is meant to be, as well as Joey and Chandler's apartment right across the hall. So fans of the show, could probably instantly picture the interior of Monica's apartment, um, probably in great detail. Uh, big open layout, lots of color. Now anybody that lives in New York City and certainly lives in New York City in a building of a similar age to the one that they show as being their building would tell you that that apartment looks nothing like a standard New York City apartment. A lot of apartments, especially in older buildings, don't have that big open layout. And the reason they did that and kind of had to forego a little bit of authenticity was to accommodate the fact that they were going to be filming every single episode in front of a live studio audience. So we are now walking right down Bedford Street, just so you know where we are. Every episode was filmed in front of a live audience. In fact, if you're a super fan and you watched the reunion special that came out kind of recently, you would have seen a little bit more of the behind the scenes, what that soundstage actually looked at, looked like seeing the big open layout of the apartment and with the audience next to it. So that would not really be the interior of the building we're about to go see, but it did work well for the purposes of that show. That open layout meant that the live studio audience was able to see everything that was going on as they were taping and really follow along. Did, any, did everybody watch the reunion special? Let us know in the comments. I really, really enjoyed it. Being a fan of the show and being somebody that is down here a lot and walks by this building, I thought it was really interesting to see a bit more how it was put together. So the other thing you will most certainly notice when you come and visit this building in person is that there is no Central Perk on the ground floor. Um, Central Perk is one of the locations in the show that is entirely fictional. In fact, if you did watch that reunion special, the set of Central Perk was right behind what was supposedly Rachel's bedroom door um, going from the apartment set. 
So while there is not a central perk here, you will not find Gunther making cappuccinos here at Grove in Bedford. There is actually a great restaurant. It's called The Little Owl. We'll see it in just a moment. Highly worth visiting, especially if you're coming down here to take a look at the building anyway. And there it is, right there on the corner. So I'm not stopping and looking up at the building yet because we are going to the other corner. Pro tip for when you come here and make this visit on your own, the best view of the building, the best photo, is the corner diagonal from the building. You'll get the best light, and you'll have the best view. So that is where we are heading now. And as you can see, I am not the only one here. I'm gonna give you a quick look around so you can see how many people are here. And this is a random Wednesday afternoon in September. But there it is. This is why everybody's standing here. This apartment building, Grove in Bedford, the Friends apartment building. So if you stand here long enough here at the corner of Grove and Bedford and look at it and think back on the show and of the apartment that is meant to be inside, one of the things you will definitely start to notice is despite the iconic scenes that take place on the balcony at Monica and Rachel's apartment, there are no balconies in this building. Um, so that is another element to the apartment building besides the layout of the apartment that would be implausible here. But definitely doesn't detract from the fact that this is a very, very well-loved spot. There is the little owl across the street. It's not Central Perk, but I do still recommend it. It actually takes its name from the building across the street. This is just a house, but if you look up here on the top, there is a little stone owl. I don't know if you can see that. That little stone owl is meant to scare away pigeons, but that is where that restaurant across the street takes its name. It has great reviews, great food. Definitely check it out. So we are going to continue walking a little bit, trying to not get in everybody's photo shoots. Whoop, sorry. Um, one more look at the building from over here. Now, one of the questions that comes up over and over and over again is, and you'll hear this actually about any TV show set in New York City, how did these characters afford this apartment? Could they really have afforded it? And of course, like I said, the apartment shown was very, very large, very open. And the way they explain how these characters, Monica and Rachel, have this apartment even when they are often shown as being unemployed or working low paying jobs, especially in those earlier, um, earlier parts of the show, is they say it's an illegal sublet. It's Monica's grandmother's apartment and it's rent controlled. So if you really dig into it, this is a thing that exists in New York City. Uh, rent control can exist in buildings um, were built before 1947. There are still some of these leases, though it is very, very uncommon. I believe they say that their rent is $350 a month and it sounds crazy and like that couldn't be true, but there was somebody living just a few blocks away at the time that the show was meant to be taking place. And they were living in an apartment for roughly that same price in this neighborhood. So even though I would put it in the category of highly unlikely, it is not actually impossible. It was a pretty good way of explaining how they were able to have this famous apartment in one of the most desirable residential neighborhoods in New York City. So we're still walking. <laughs> Um, continuing, uh, we walked all the way down Bedford. We're turning, we're heading over to Christopher Street. So this is to check out this site coming up. Now this was actually a spot that was used as a filming location. Um, and this is the Lucille Lortel Theater. And this is where Joey, Joey Tribbiani is shown to be in a play here at the Lucille Lortel Theater. It's actually a great episode. Um, 
the show that he is shown to be in is, is pretty silly and fun, but it is also the episode where Ben Stiller guest stars. Now with a show as popular as Friends was and as long running as Friends was, there were many, many celebrity guest stars. Ben Stiller was just one of them, but he plays a guy that Rachel briefly dates that is shown to have a very volatile, volatile temper. And Ross is very taken aback when they go to find their seats at the Lucille Lortel Theater. And Ben Stiller's character absolutely freaks out on this couple who are sitting in their seats. Um, so it is shown to be a very big deal when Joey gets this show here. His uh, agent Estelle makes a very big deal of it. And that is actually accurate. That would be true in real life as well. This is one of the best known off-Broadway theaters in New York City. It is a big deal if an actor is in a show here and is definitely a place you should check out when you come in to visit. You know, people always go to Broadway shows and you should definitely do that as well. But if you wanted to check out off-Broadway, you should see what's on at the Lucille Lortel Theater. Thanks for joining me on this short walk through Greenwich Village to check out some Friends sites. Um, hope you had a good time. If you are interested in filming locations, make sure to check out some of our other options like our Sex in the City uh, tour. We have a self-guided option. We also have a video tour. Um, there are lots of other filming sites to see in New York. There's a lot more to see in New York. And make sure you check out some of our other virtual tours, including cities like London and New Orleans. And we hope to see you soon. Bye.